Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today I want to talk about RSP. This is from Invesco. This is their S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF. Now you're probably more familiar with VOO, it's ever so popular, or SPY, same thing. Those are market weight S&P 500 ETFs. This one's equal weight. So there are some pluses and minuses to a fund like this, and that's what I want to talk about today. If that is what you're looking for, please stick around. So let's talk RSP from Invesco. And this is all about taking the S&P 500 stocks and making every one of them equal weight every single quarter. Now, why would you consider doing something like that? Well, it has to do with concentration risk. But I like to think of it as momentum versus value. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But if we take a VOO, which is market cap weighted versus RSP, we're gonna see different breakdowns, although they contain the exact same 500 stocks. So with VOO, which is all based on market cap, you're gonna see Apple and Microsoft dominate the top here at 7.12% and 6.23%. And these top 10 right here represent 27%, or over a quarter of the fund is represented by these 10 stocks, right? So in this case, it's all about momentum. If our big horses here are running, this thing is gonna perform pretty darn well. Now, if we go over and look at RSP, we're gonna see a whole different setup, right? Even though it's the exact same 500 stocks. So in this case, every single quarter, they're gonna come back in here and they're gonna take one divided by 500 equals 0.2%. And they're gonna set all 500 stocks back to 0.2%. And then we're gonna see which ones are performing the best. So in this case, we're kind of looking at value, right? Because if you've had something that's run up really well, they're gonna sell shares and that particular holding, they're gonna buy the dogs of the S&P 500. So do you like that idea? In some ways I do, in some ways I don't. A lot of times the dogs of the Dow perform really well. So in this case, you see all these percentages are right around that 0.2%, but the ones that have done best since it's been re-weighed have been Intuitive Surgical, Tyler, McCormick, Teleflex, and Eli Lilly. These have been the best performers in the S&P 500 since they re-weighed this. So, out of these top 10, we only have 2.32% represented by those top 10. Very different makeup. So in my mind, RSP basically boils down to a strategy that investors can use that are looking to diversify their portfolios and reduce concentration risk. It does this by rebalancing those same stocks that are in the S&P 500 market weighted index, just like VOO or SPY, and they do this each and every quarter. So each stock will be rebalanced to a weighing of about 0.2%, and this happens on the third Friday in March, June, September, and December. So when might we see an example of how this rebalancing could actually help us? Well, let's think about the first part of 2023. So what you're looking at here is the 2023 year-to-date chart of XLK, which is the technology sector ETF, versus XLF in blue, which is the financial sector ETF and SPY. So if I went back to the beginning of the year, it's kind of comical because everybody on TV was saying, sell tech, buy financials. Q1 was supposed to be all about financials and everyone was saying, get out of tech. But it ended up being all about tech. Well, we know what happened to financials, right? They got crushed. So Q2 might just be the opposite. But look at this, year to date, we're up almost 20% in technology. We're down over 3% in financials and right in the middle is SPY. So is it a good time to rebalance this? If I was a betting man right now, where would I want to be? I would actually, in this case, I mean, it might change for different scenarios, but yes, I would be selling technology right now. I would be buying financials going forward for the next six months. That's my personal opinion. Uh, that doesn't make it right. That's my personal opinion, but it's just very interesting. So if RSP sold some of these tech gains and bought the dogs, some of those financial stocks right now, well, it may work out nicely. Now with VOO from Vanguard, you are buying the S&P 500 extremely cheaply. The expense ratio on this is 0.03%. That's extremely low. The yield is 1.6%. Contrast that with RSP and you'll see that the expense ratio jumps up to 0.2%. There's a lot more to manage when you're rebalancing 500 stocks every single quarter. It's probably a large part of the reason that the expense ratio is so much higher, but nearly seven times as much. That will have an effect over time, but it is still pretty low overall. 
The yield does jump up to 1.8%, again, because we're selling out a lot of those momentum and technology stocks that drive the S&P 500, and we're probably buying more value stocks that offer a little bit more of a dividend. Now, 1.6 to 1.8 doesn't sound like a lot, but that is 12.5%, which uh, I'm sure you'd take that raise at work, right? Now, if we take a look at charting, uh, just comparing it over different periods of time, we're going to see different times they come out ahead. But in the long run, it looks like the momentum of VOO pays off compared to RSP, but they are pretty darn close. So year to date, again, we know what happened here. Those big dogs, right? Those big market cap stocks and VOO really took off. So you can see the difference when those things take off up 8.62% year to date 2023 versus RSP at 3.21%. So big gap there. Now this gap might close up again if those financials to come storming back or some of those other ones that have gotten beaten up come storming back and some of those technology stocks, stocks start giving it up. But if we go out to one year, RSP, again, not too bad. They're pretty close within about a percent and a half. If we go to a three year period, well, then we actually get a reversal here. All that value over this tumultuous period of time, those three years, see that value is kind of added up here. We got 72% versus 58%. So in that three-year period, RSP comes out ahead by a, a fairly large margin. Out five years, though, we revert back. Again, relatively close considering a five-year period, but still about a 10 or 11, 12% gap there between VO and RSP. And then if you go out to 10 years, again, they mirror each other closely along the way, but VOO with the momentum of those big market cap stocks kind of carries the day uh, up a considerable amount there overall. But either one would have been a great investment, being up nearly 200% over the last 10 years. So momentum in stocks, it is really important. I hate to get in the way of a runaway freight train when it's working for me, but there does come a time when you might want to sell and diversify a little bit and rebalance. So. For example, I've had Microsoft, I've had Apple probably for 25 years, but after some nice big run-ups, I will sell off some shares and rebalance. And I think that's worked out well for me over a period of time. But uh, momentum does tend to carry the day, so it's all about timing. However, when you start thinking about taxes, if you're doing this within a taxable account, like if I was gonna sell my winners and buy the losers, right? I'm gonna have a taxable event and that's not a great thing for me. So what do you do? Well. My friend that I was talking to about this particular ETF brought up a very good point, and I did a little bit of research, and uh, what you'll see right here is my concern about taxes and how it was explained to me through this Vanguard article. So I'll link this, but ETFs can often trade in kind. So that does not create a taxable event. And uh, all that's highlighted here, as well as uh, what they're saying over here on the Invesco website. So I'll lay that all all here. But if you want to read this article completely, it will be linked down in the description. Now, one thing that did kind of surprise me with RSP was that it had a greater max drawdown versus VOO. And uh, that kind of goes against my intuition because we're selling these uh, stocks and we're buying what I consider value or the ones that got beat up. But maybe that's not the case when you actually have a correction in the market, right? Maybe we're selling these good ones and we're buying the ones with free cash flow problems and lots of debt. So that might be the reason. Whereas VOO being market cap weighted it takes a lot to like uh, slow down Microsoft and Apple before they finally capitulate and say, fine, we're going down too. So that might be why you actually see that max drawdown greater in RSP. Now, if you've got experience with RSP, I'd love to hear your story of why you own it versus VOO or vice versa. Let me know down in the comments, but I really appreciate you taking a minute to watch this with me and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Whoop.